I had no concept of how much food I actually needed to eat or what foods to avoid. I would simply eat and eat and eat and eat until either someone stopped me or I was pretty full. I always loved to eat the ice cream, the candy, the burgers, whatever other junk food would be provided while I was in school. So even though my mom was making healthy dishes at home, she couldn't control what I was eating at school and they would be giving us crap. I remember every Friday in elementary school, we would have In-N-Out burgers. And I don't know what I would eat, but teaching kids to eat In-N-Out burgers every week or giving out free ice cream, candy, to me, it doesn't seem like the best uh, habits teaching. In fact, I think it's fucking insane that schools promote such unhealthy eating habits. The fact that we would be served those kinds of junk food is so detrimental to a child's development because they learn to eat the wrong things. Kids are active. So the odds are that there's not gonna be a huge visual difference as a young person. An unhealthy diet will always manifest in weight gain or other health issues. But that's just for the majority. Some kids did become pretty fat in elementary school and then eat the crap and it would be terrible if their parents were trying to push healthy eating habits at home and now all of a sudden this kid's eating fruit roll-ups and burgers at school and the parents are wondering, why is it my kid losing weight? Why is my kid pre-diabetic in the fifth grade? The habits that are being taught at a young age in schools across the country are not beneficial to our young people. We should be taught the importance of eating a healthy, balanced diet containing vegetables, starches, proteins, healthy grains, healthy fats in the form of butter, avocado oil, olive oil, no goddamn vegetable oils. I hate vegetable oils. Seriously, vegetable oils are killing our society one step at a fucking time. They are killing our society. Let me tell you a story. My good friend described to me an experience when he went to vacation in Destin, Florida with his family and his cousin. They both spent five to six hours on the beach every day for three days. My friend came away from the trip with a terrible sunburn, peeling, sensitive skin, red, and just not feeling great. But these were symptoms he'd experienced his whole life from moderate to severe sun exposure. So this was normal. Whenever he was out in the sun for a long time, this is the type of sunburn he would get. His cousin, however, barely was even burnt. These are both very pale white dudes. His cousin was barely burnt. He had a sunburn that slowly converted to a tan after a day or two. And the only difference that my friend and his cousin could figure out was their diet. Now my friend, he eats junk foods. He would eat the fast food, the candy, the ice cream, not a lot of vegetables, not a lot of healthy grains. Meanwhile, his cousin only ate whole foods. He didn't eat fast food. He didn't eat candy. He didn't eat ice cream. He was actually on a vegetarian diet. I'm not gonna say the vegetarian diet is the only way, but the point is is that he was eating food that was good for you, that his body knew how to process. Granted, this story is anecdotal, but I think it holds some weight. Stories like these really cement that it is imperative to understand and optimize your diet to your body. Because every body is individual and will respond differently to various food groups. But there is a diet that is optimal out there for you. There is a diet that will make you feel good. If you fit into that pale white person category, there is the diet that will allow you to go out into the sun and not have your entire body peel like a banana. 
There is the diet that when you wake up in the morning, you don't have that brain fog. There's the diet that makes you feel energized throughout the day. There's the diet that allows you to think faster than you ever thought was possible. There's the diet that allows you to stay lean and in shape and have energy to go do a lot of physical activity. Look, if you guys are experiencing discomfort or health systems or brain fog or obesity or any sort of other problems, start cutting out the crap out of your diet. If you really can't figure out what it is, if you already cut out the fast food, you already cut out the candy, you already cut out the junk food, try an elimination diet. Start from square one. Go super simple. One or two things. And then slowly add foods back into your diet until you have a reaction. And if you don't, the foods that you add in, your body responds well to. And now you figure out a diet that is sustainable for you for the rest of your life. So my journey to figuring out diet has been absolutely wacky. I've had done a lot of trial and error and messed up a lot. So let's talk about it. As a junior in high school, I was 175 pounds and I wasn't big enough or strong enough or athletic enough to be a starter on the football team at that point. And I wanted to be a starter for my senior year. So I knew I needed to gain muscle and gain weight to be competitive on the team. Going on that philosophy, I underwent my first bulk. Literally consuming as many calories as possible. I didn't understand what it took to gain muscle. So this is what I did. Every morning, I would consume five eggs, a full avocado, and two toasts. About two to three hours later, after I finished the first period of classes, I would buy two massive breakfast burritos from the school cafeteria and eat those in my next class. These burritos were massive. One with sausage, one with bacon. They probably each had about two to three eggs, cheese, whatever else was in there, potatoes, I don't remember. Three hours after that, I was eating two peanut butter, banana, and honey sandwiches with fruits and vegetables, if I could even stomach the fruits and vegetables at that point, because I was eating a fuck ton of food. After the day was over, I would go to practice and lift, have a calorie dense protein bar, those Gatorade protein bars with 350 calories, and a protein shake, about 200 calories. Once I got home, I would eat whatever dinner my mom had prepared. After about an hour of digesting that, I would make a 1,000 calorie mass gainer protein shake. I would put fruit, two scoops of protein, oats, peanut butter, honey, yogurt, banana. I don't even remember what else. I remember counting the calories one time and it was about 1,000 because this thing was like two liters of smoothie. I would have the whole thing. I was eating way more food than necessary and I gained weight extremely fast. Three months later, I was up 30 pounds. I probably put on around 10 to 15 pounds of muscle and 15 to 20 pounds of fat. 30 pounds, three months, 10 pounds a month, 15 pounds of muscle, so maybe in an ideal world, it was 50-50, but it was probably 60-40 fat because I was young. I'd only been lifting for a year at this point, so my body had the ability to put on tons of muscle. But if this is you and you've been at it for a few years, you're just gonna get fat. I was eating way too much food. So after the massive weight gain, I cut back on the calories a little bit, which wasn't hard because I was stuffing food down my throat, forcing it down. So all I had to do was eat until I was very satisfied and I was all good. Just started working on my strength training. And four months after starting my bulk, 
I started the bulk in December, so four months later, my bench press had gone from 185 to 265, my squat went from 285 to 365, and my deadlift went from 355 to 415. Was what I did necessary to make those gains on my lifts? Absolutely not. Could I have put on the same amount of muscle if I ate less? Yes. I simply did not know how to properly eat for sustainable weight gain and instead followed the classic bulk formula of eating as much as possible. So where did I learn that? I would go on YouTube and watch the big bodybuilders putting down 5,000 calories, doing their dirty bulk. What I didn't know is that guy, those guys weighed so much that they just needed any way possible to get in the calories. I wasn't a 250 pound bodybuilder. I was a 175, 175 pound relatively untrained young guy who probably needed to be eating 3,000 to 3,400 calories a day and I was putting down 5,000. 1,600 calories extra every day. And yes, I put on massive strength and size, but it also left me feeling insecure about the fat gain. I started to lack confidence because I thought I was just a fat guy who was strong rather than a aesthetic, strong, muscular guy who is still putting on progress. Now it left me wanting to cut and lose weight because I was fat and I wasn't obese. I was just holding more body fat than I thought was necessary to look good and also perform. I see dudes all the time in my college gym who are bulking and they fall into the same trap. They just get fat. They think that they have to eat as much as possible to gain weight. And two weeks later, you look at them you're like, holy fuck, this guy is munching way too much. I understand you're trying to get strong, but you're looking terrible. After years of working out, I realized that you really don't need to put bulk to put on muscle or strength. As long as you eat until you're full and eat maybe just a little bit more, you're golden. It's crazy. You really don't need to eat that much. Your body knows how to allocate resources and nutrients to your muscles if you're simply providing the stimulus to get bigger and stronger. If you are pushing yourself in the gym to get better, you're telling your nervous system that my body is going to undergo this stress on a consistent basis. Your body will adapt to those circumstances and build more muscle. You don't need to put down 5,000 calories if you're 175 pounds. It's simply not the case. So after my football career ended, it was really easy for me to lose weight because I wasn't eating. I didn't have that force to eat all the time. So I simply, I lost 15 pounds from just not eating all the time and continuing to work out. It was great. I was about 190 pounds and in decently better shape. When I came to college though, I quickly put the weight back on because I was exposed to a whole host of new stimuli. Massive alcohol consumption, parties, and unlimited food in the dining halls. That was terrible. First of all, the food in the dining hall was not exactly the healthiest for you. They always had pizza, they always had tacos and burritos and you know, what filled with cheese, filled with oil, fried foods, wings, fried food for breakfast, fried food for lunch, fried food for dinner, all cooked in shitty vegetable oils, serving guacamole that came from a bag that tasted like chemicals. It was shitty food, so I packed on the pounds. And around the same time I was putting on the pounds, I joined a class called Advanced Coaching Leadership. And part of the curriculum involved pushing yourself physically. So through that, I was required to run. And as a senior in high school, I was playing football, but long distance running, not my thing. I could barely run a mile without my calves cramping. So I wasn't completely enthusiastic about starting to run. 
Nonetheless, I began running a few times a week starting in January 2020 and sucked at it. I was terrible, but I kept going. And after a few months, I slowly started to build up some endurance and some confidence. But right as I was starting to hit my stride, COVID-19 came and hit us like a bolt. Sent me back home into lockdown in California. This was terrible. It was the worst thing for me because in regards to my running and my lifting and my diet, I was just hitting my stride, getting so much better at running. And now I'm home all the time and it just led me to starting to consume junk food again. I came home and there was just a bunch of Milano and Oreo cookies and I would munch those till 10 to midnight every night. I would bring them up to, into my room and just be eating these cookies as well as my normal food portions. And at the same time, I wasn't keeping up the same level of activity because the gyms were closed. For some reason, I decided that running, because I wasn't in school anymore, I didn't need to run. So the decreased activity and the increased caloric consumption led me straight back to 205 pounds, looking out of shape and looking fat. So that started my journey to restart my running and actually go on my first cut of all time. The day I weighed in at 205 marks the start of my running journey and my first cut. I, I will say I had an attempt at a cut in my junior year of high school, but it didn't really work. I was weighing my foods. I lost about five, 10 pounds in a good amount of time. Then we went on vacation. I, we went to a barbecue restaurant where I consumed thousands of calories, ended up gaining all the way back, got discouraged and stopped cutting. I lacked consistency at that point. Okay, back to the story. I start running again in April. It took me about a month from the time we got sent home for COVID in the beginning of March till the first or second week of April for me to really make the change. I rapidly ramp up my running. So in May, I ran 80 miles. So going from nothing to 20 miles a week in May. And then in June, I ran 100 miles, 25 miles a week. In July, I ran 150 miles. In August, I ran 150 miles. That's 30 to 40 miles a week. Insane. This was a part of me that I didn't know I was capable of, but I just said, fuck it, we ball. I'm going. I'm a dog. Part of it, it helped that there was no gym and I needed something to push myself. Because the moment I decided that I'm going to run, I am going to become athletic, I am going to shed this weight, it was non-negotiable. Running was gonna happen every day. It was easy. It was hard. The runs were hard. Going out there day after day after day, waking up at six in the morning to go run, to run hill sprints, to go do my three mile warm up run 15 hill sprints and then another three miles after fuck man i a lot of those runs sucked it's like my feet hurt i don't want to do this why do i live on such a big goddamn hill why do i have to keep running the beach path was nice ran a lot on the beach path but we ran a lot of hills just hills 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 all the fucking time but it worked it worked at the same time that I was doing all of this running, I was meticulously weighing all of my foods, counting every gram, counting every calorie. I was obsessive. I was obsessive about running all the time. I was obsessive about counting every calorie. I would not eat one extra grain of rice. I remember hitting my lowest weight on the scale September of 2020, I was 162 pounds, 40 pounds dropped since the beginning of April. If you do the math, I was losing two and a half pounds every week for four months. That's insane. 
I became so neurotic about my eating habits that sometimes I would dream about eating sugary, calorically dense foods every night. My YouTube homepage was filled with Eric the Electric or other popular eating channels, people doing 10,000 calorie challenges, restaurant challenges, sampling tasty foods. And I don't even I don't even know if it was a bad thing. I do think that I probably was eating wasn't eating enough. Granted because of the amount of activity I was doing, I was running a lot. I could have been eating more, eating more carbs to fuel my runs, but being obsessive about shedding the pounds, I believe it was a good thing. I'm living vicariously through random people on the internet eating copious amounts of junk foods. But this is just my DNA. I relate everything to thinking about hunter-gatherers. So in a hunter-gatherer, they're out there, they're running for a week, and they have no food. Their brain is hardwired to be thinking about the most calorically dense foods because that is what's going to allow the body to survive. So in a way, my brain was doing the same thing, but it was thinking about fucking McDonald's or In-N-Out or a muffin or Chipotle, whatever it was. So this leads up to September 19th, 2020. I hit my lowest weight, 162 pounds, just a few days before this. And then I decide I'm going to complete a 10,000 calorie challenge myself and upload it to YouTube. Kind of crazy, right? So I've hit my lowest weight on the scale and (laughs) my brain is constantly thinking about all the foods that I haven't been eating for the past four or five months. And I gave myself the okay to let the floodgates open. No holds barred. Go completely insane on every food in existence. The day before, I went to the grocery store and I bought every cookie, muffin, ice cream, bread that I had dreamed about for the past four months. I woke up the day of the 10,000 calorie challenge at 5.20 in the morning, got dressed, and (laughs) I had a giant bowl of cinnamon toast crunch and two cookies. About 1,000 calories to start the morning. I went to the gym. Still was going to work out. I was going to try and burn as many calories as possible. I went to the gym, did 10,000 meters on the rower, and a bunch of kettlebell swings, a bunch of burpees, burning some calories. After that, I went to Starbucks, got their egg McMuffin or whatever, that's McDonald's, but whatever, their bacon egg Gouda, that thing. Had a bunch of those. Went home, got some chocolate chip brioche bread french toast with nutella and peanut butter and maple syrup ate a full box of cheez its ate i went to a french bakery and ate a bunch of food did i just like just eating all day and i this day i also went on an adventure with my friends so we drove down to laguna beach went to the explored the cliffs ran went through some cool caves actually ended up burning a lot of calories that day. I burnt 4,000 calories that day, which is a fuck ton, but I also ate (laughs) 10,000. So I was still in a 6,000 calorie surplus. (laughs) But (laughs) So (laughs) it's kind of wild. The one day I burned probably the most calories of my life, I'm also eating 10,000 calories. I ate so much food, and I remember at the end of the day, it was like 9 o'clock, and I was at 9,000 calories. I just thought, fuck. I need to eat another 1,000 calories, and I just had the full Caniac combo from Raising Cane's with six tenders, fries, and a drink, and dude, I don't know. I just fucking did it, because like, I had to complete the challenge, so I ate another pint of Ben & Jerry's right before bed, and that was, that one felt disgusting. That one hurt. Man. I was really regretting doing the challenge. I'd finished, I completed it, but that Ben and Jerry's made my stomach hurt. I was bloated, I was farting, I was could, couldn't even fucking move just because there was so much food, so many calories. Probably, in hindsight, 
not the best idea to do the 10,000 calorie challenge, but that's what I did. The 10K challenge, while I had really looked forward to it, it started a phase in my life which was kind of terrible. A lot of yo-yo dieting. So what, for those of you who don't know what yo-yo dieting is, it's a nasty cycle of under eating followed by binge eating of, or overeating. What had happened with the 10K challenge is something deep inside my brain, a switch had clicked. I had opened the floodgates. I had started to ignore the discipline I'd built up over the past four months. And part of it was that one day where I've been a 6,000 calorie surplus from this challenge, I put on like five pounds and I wanted to lose those five pounds as quickly as possible. And for some reason, I forgot what I had done to lose the weight in the first place. I had meticulously weighed my foods. I had made sure I'd done my cardio and simply waited, played the long game, didn't try to quickly just drop all of the weight. But at this point, all I wanted to do is get back to 162. I'm 170 now, what the fuck? I gotta get back there down, get back down there tomorrow. My brain was not functioning the same way it was before. I couldn't, I didn't realize that, yeah, I'm not going to get back down to 162 in a day. I'm not gonna look as shredded as I was. Dude, I was still fucking shredded though at 170. I didn't recognize that though. Body dysmorphia or whatever. I quickly started to obsess over getting back down to 162 over thinking about the process of how to get there. I remember going on a trip to Palm Springs with my friends and going absolutely insane on every food available. I wasn't doing the grocery shopping, so the food available was delicious and calorie dense. I was still working out, but I was greatly over consuming past what I was burning. It, the trip to Palm Springs was an excuse for me to go ham. Oh, I'm not at home now. Oh, I'm not controlling the foods that are available. Oh, we're going to dinner. Oh, the boys are going to Sonic? We're going to Sonic and having ice cream? Oh, my buddy, he also likes Ben and Jerry's? So let's go get Ben and Jerry's from 7-Eleven and buy a brownie and buy a, a, a banana and honey and make a giant fucking sundae of disgusting calories. Terrible. I remember feeling mentally and physically terrible after those binge sessions. I have pictures from when I looked in the mirror and yeah, I had a six pack, but my stomach was fucking 20 inches away from my, from my ribs because I was so bloated from all the food. I would look in the mirror and feel like a piece of shit. I didn't love myself enough to treat my body with love and affection. I was so focused on getting back to being lean and shredded, but I was restricting myself so much so that when the opportunity presented itself, I would binge eat and go so hard. Some would classify this as an eating disorder. Opening the floodgates with a 10,000 calorie challenge and then being so focused on getting back to where I was, Swift shifted my obsession. My obsession from making progress towards my goal to my obsession of, holy fuck, I'm not where I was, I need to be shredded again. There's a difference between a healthy and a non-healthy obsession. You can be focused on your progress, a healthy obsession, or you can be focused on the goal, a non-healthy obsession. So if you want to complete any goal in your life, I believe it is imperative to be obsessed. You need to be obsessed if you want to accomplish your goal and exceed your current potential. If you want to expand the limits of what you are capable of, you need to be obsessed. It must be on your mind immediately when you wake up. It must pop into your head frequently throughout the day and be on your mind when you go to sleep. That is how you excel but you have to be obsessed about the journey towards the goal. Be obsessed upon the progression. Be obsessed on the steps you need to take to get better every day. The problems I experienced occurred when my obsession shifted to the end goal, not the journey. My obsession turned unhealthy the moment I stopped paying attention to the daily journey, to the healthy habits I had 
created to solidify to reach the end goal. I wasn't thinking about today, I'm simply going to weigh my food out, be in a good calorie deficit, get my workout in, and have a win today, and then have a win tomorrow, and then have a win the next day. It became, how do I eat as little as possible to get back to 162 pounds as fast as possible? Do you see the difference? The What was in my head was the 162 pound goal. It wasn't the, let me get a win today. Let me get a win tomorrow. A lot of people will tell you it is unhealthy to be obsessed. That it's important to have balance in life. They're wrong. They are the majority. They are the average person. Don't listen to the average person in the majority. If you listen to the average person, you will, ret- you will achieve average results. The top performers in every organization, every industry, the gym, whatever, school, they're obsessive. They will do everything to reach their goal. They will leave no unturned, no stone unturned. I have a friend who could be classified as a party animal. This dude loves to smoke, love to drink, love to do drugs. He loves to have fun. But what does he love even more? Being the best in the classroom, being so competitive and obsessive about beating everyone else out. So this guy who loves to drink and loves to party and loves to go hit on girls, this whole semester for the past four months, it's April 9th when I'm recording this, he hasn't had a single sip of alcohol hasn't smoked once. He's been completely sober the whole time. What has he been doing? He's been obsessive about reaching his goals. Every free moment he has, he's studying. He's preparing for his next next investment banking interview. He is doing every practice problem available to him. He's redoing every single homework problem available. He's going to every single office hours that the teachers have. He's obsessive. And you know what? He hasn't done worse than a 95 on anything. Completely outperforming every single person by a country mile. And you know what? This is the guy who is going to reach his goals. You have to be obsessive. This was the Infinite Gain. If you enjoyed the podcast, drop me a follow. Leave your feedback in the Q&A section below. I'm your host, Nico Kathuria. Have a good one.